This week, I made a low poly caribou. Let's go see how I made him in Blender. And here we are back in Blender with our very best friend, Blender Default Cube, as always. So to start any model, I like to just start from the cube and extrude all the way out along Y just to kind of start shaping out the torso of the animal. And then I'll extrude out a very simple <laughs> rectangular neck and a very simple rectangular head, just like you see there. And then next thing I usually do is I'll just add a loop cut and maybe a mirror modifier so I can extrude out some legs and have the shape repeated symmetrically on both sides. Just makes things a little bit easier for me. Always love that. <laughs> so for the legs, this is always somewhere where I know I tend to get bogged down um, working on the legs of any model, so I try to keep it as simple as I possibly can. You can see those front legs, they're, you know, quote unquote done for the very earliest stage. Um, you know, I try to only add loop cuts where they will make a meaningful addition or change to the shape that I'm trying to create. So for the front legs, I mean, just looking at them, I would already even say that that loop cut at the very top, like kind of in the top half of the legs, it's not doing anything. You could, I could have easily gotten rid of it and the shape wouldn't have changed at all, but only adding loop cuts where I think I need kind of a curve to exist or something for the leg shapes. And you can see I'm kind of hemming and hawing going back and forth about adding um, a certain loop cut um, kind of in the thigh area of the back legs there. Um, and you can see in the reference up in the top left, I have um, these great reference photos I found for like a how to draw caribou guide super super helpful and you can see if you look at my back leg on the model and the back leg in the reference am i struggling with conceptualizing the shape yes very much so but that's okay it's just the early model that's how it is okay so early on like right here i tried adding a loop cut in the center of the body and pulling all of those edges along the side of the body outward just to round out the shape a little bit more that didn't quite work, so I tried grabbing all of the edges along the top edge of the body and pulling them down and inward. Also didn't work. Generally, it's probably not a good idea to grab all of the vertices or all of the edges along, you know, a very long loop, like along the entire top edge of the body, because all those vertices are in different, they're at different heights is one way to think about it. So if you try to move all of them in the same relative direction, unexpected things are going to happen, so it's easier to just adjust smaller sections of the model at a time rather than all of the vertices along the entire, like, one side of the body. Not usually good. So right here, I've pulled up another reference uh, illustration here, and I'm just kind of grabbing large sections of the model, like I grabbed all the entire, like, back half of the model and dragged it out farther to match it up a bit closer with this great little reference illustration um, that I found here and matching up the rump of the model and the back of the back legs actual shape, um, matching those up with that illustration there. And it doesn't have to be the most accurate thing in the world, but just taking reference images like that and just checking the overall proportion of things is very helpful as you go. Okay, I'm gonna take my knife tool and I'm just adding some cuts here so I can extrude out some little reindeer ears. We haven't even talked about reindeer versus caribou, so not reindeer, reindeer versus caribou like they're about to fight, but just where would, you know, rainbow versus rainbow. Hello? Rain I can't do it, I almost called them a rainbow. Reindeer versus caribou. When do we use these terms? So. Reindeer and caribou, they're technically referring to the same, my understanding, disclaimer, my understanding is they're the same, it's referring to the same species or the same animal overall, but a reindeer, a lot of the time, that term would be used to refer to like a semi-domesticated version of a caribou. Um, and it also can be a regional thing, I think. I think I read that reindeer is the more common term maybe in Europe for caribou, but caribou is the more common term for them um, in North America. So I don't know. Interesting. So for the hooves, this was a very challenging part for me. Um, their hooves, the way I originally made them, they just have perfectly cylindrical um, like horse hooves basically. And 
that's not what their feet look like. Um, reindeer have cloven hooves that are kind of split in two, like little fingers kind of on the bottom of their legs. And these great big hooves are actually very advantageous for our good friend, the caribou. So when they're walking on snow, for example, they spread out really wide and kind of give them a sort of snowshoe effect is what I've seen it described as. Like just having these really widespread feet allows them to step on snow without maybe slipping in so much. Um, and they also, they're really helpful for the different types of terrains that caribou or reindeer will encounter when they migrate. So caribou actually end up swimming a lot along their migration paths. Um, they may have to swim a lot and the hooves also like being able to spread their hooves very wide. It also allows them to kind of paddle through the water so they can be very good swimmers. Okay, I've added a couple, this is very exciting, I've added a couple loop cuts to the face and we're kind of getting the shape of an actual muzzle now, which is great. Um, I also took kind of the middle few faces along the bottom of the neck and just extruded those outward and then just pulled some edges out and away from the neck to create this kind of beard <laughs> that they have. Um, they have, caribou have really fluffy little necks. I've seen that, like, the fluff that actually hangs down from their neck, I've seen it described as, I've seen it called doula, a doulap before, which blew my mind because that's a word that I haven't read or seen or thought of in like a thousand years since I cared for lizards. Well, I, st I care about lizards. Let me be clear. I care about lizards. Uh, I meant I haven't kept a lizard. I haven't thought of the word dewlap since I kept a lizard that um, I had a green anole and it would display its dewlap, which is like the, it's this little like red pouch that comes out from under their neck and they bop their head up and down. And I think males do it as a t territorial display. It's been so long since I've even thought about that, but it was very fun to remember um, about lizards just now when I was reading about caribou, but they also have just this um, dewlap on their neck, but isn't used for the same purpose. They can't, you know, expand it or get rid of it the way a lizard might. They just have fur hanging down from their neck, but a fun lizard moment. <laughs> Okay, so again, pulling up a reference illustration here and just kind of matching up some of the anatomy. I didn't totally match my model up one for one with that one. Um, I don't I don't remember why exactly. I think the illustration, I think the torso was like a little bit longer and I tried that and felt crazy making my model have an even longer torso than it does right now. So things don't always have to be an exact one for one, but the references always help. So the leg shape for the front legs is actually getting a lot closer now. Um, the reference photo that I have pulled up on the top left there is really great um, for understanding the actual leg shape of the caribou because you can kind of see from more of a three quarter angle and really get a sense for just like the sort of like knobby shape <laughs> of their little knees that they have. So the base model is just about done at this point. I'm making a couple more little changes here, just gonna make a slightly rounder shape and extruding out a little bit more of a rump for our caribou here and also so I have a place to extrude a tail from. Always helpful. <laughs> um, making a few adjustments to the belly and trying to round out the top of the back legs just a little bit more. Um, at this point, like when I have most of the base of the model done, I try to really make sure that I have the topology that I want before I UV unwrap because the more I want to change the actual geometry of the model once I've UV unwrapped, it's not the end of the world, but it is definitely very annoying um, to have to go back and forth after UV unwrapping just because if I change the geometry, then the UV map changes so I have to unwrap again and no, 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 no. you know, nothing crazy, but just really try to make sure that I have the model that I want before I start texture painting, just to make things not awful. <laughs> okay, so for the antlers, um, I've just added a cube here to the top of the head, um, right between the ears and the eyes. Um, originally, I took my uh, just like the knife tool and I tried to add an extra cut um, on the top of the, of the head. And I was just going to extrude out from there, but it just didn't work out. I don't remember why. And 
well, maybe it, it might have been because I, I'm trying to think of why I decided to do it this way. Maybe because um, originally when I tried to extrude the antlers out directly from the top of the head, they were just they were going to be like flush against the edge of the head and it just looked really weird because they're actual actual caribou with their antlers they'll be you know they're not going to grow like right up the sides of the head they're gonna you know be in a bit and on the top of the head so i don't know it just made more sense to just do it this way for me um in this situation but it was really simple to do it this way too just a cube and just extruding out and making kind of a curved shape and extruding out, you know, the little, um, just different branching off sections for their antlers. And caribou actually have, like, massive antlers. I'm sure it varies between species, but a lot of the ones that I was looking at, the reference images, like, indescribably massive antlers. Just enormous, and it would have been accurate, but it would have... Just, it just would have looked a bit ridiculous on my low poly model if um, I'd made the antlers actually proportionate to what they really look like. So the antlers for the model that I ended up making, they're much more cartoonish as one would expect for, you know, a toon shaded low poly model. For the antlers that I actually ended up making on this guy, um, I ended up looking at a lot of like vintagey Christmas decorations, um, like drawings and illustrations and paintings of reindeer um, that you'd maybe see on older Christmas cards and stuff. I don't know, I don't know why it is, but it's just like, it seems like when we see, when we think of reindeer like around Christmas time, they're always depicted with having these like much thinner, like, I'd say like tree branch like kind of antlers instead of what they really look like. I don't know what that like I'm very curious about why that actually is. I don't know if maybe it's because like you know maybe in the US because we're more used to seeing deer with antlers. Like we're the, we're pretty familiar I would say Americans anyway. We're pretty familiar with the shape of deer antlers and I that's what I think the antlers on a lot of like Christmas decoration style depictions of reindeer. That's what they their antlers usually look like. They look like kind of tree branches or what you'd see on a buck. Um, but yeah, so cr old Christmas decorations were really great references for my model. And I would say my caribou in particular, I was very influenced by the antlers in like the, the claymation Rudolph movie, you know, um, especially Rudolph's dad. I think his dad is Donner, I think. Can't be completely sure. We have our antlers, and now, of course, I need to extrude out a little tail for the little deer. And this is pretty much most of the model at this point. Extruding out the tail for some reason can trip me up sometimes. I might have to do it a couple times before I kind of get it um, to where I want it to be, especially with the outline. Like when you're extruding out, you know, an app appendage like this or something um, where it kind of overlaps with the mesh of the actual body, the outlines can kind of clip through one another on different pieces of mesh, so yeah, it can take a couple tries sometimes, but in BD. And now we're back to the hooves again. <laughs> back to the cloven hooves. So I ended up, yeah, I ended up just adding just a few extra cuts so I could kind of drag an edge backward at the middle of the hoof. Yeah, just like you see right there, just dragging an edge backward to create just kind of a triangular shape for the hooves. It's not necessarily the actual hoof shape that a caribou has. Like, caribou actually have four separate little toes on their hooves. They have two big ones that you think that you normally think of when you see their like cloven hooves, but they also have two like smaller little toes kind of on the back of the foot that I didn't end up modeling just because it kind of got into that like too much detail, slightly uncanny <laughs> kind of level of detail for a low poly model, but always fun to know. So now we've moved on to UV unwrapping. Of course, the most exhilarating part <laughs> of any 3D modeling process. Um, but yeah, for this model, I knew I knew I wasn't gonna do a ton of texture painting on this one just because I modeled like 
there's some animals like if they have a pattern or spots or stripes or something like that I'll definitely texture paint details like that but for someone like our friend caribou who is mostly like different shades of brown and they have like this tan kind of lighter colored neck is probably the most distinctive like part of their coat I don't generally paint like fur details like to indicate that there's actual fur or hair on a model um again it's just a little bit too much detail for me it just looks a little weird <laughs> so i mostly just blocked out a lot of different colors like the hooves are one color the neck dewlap area is one color most of the body is one color just a couple areas um, where I added some extra detail were like fuzzy little ears. I always like to add fuzzy ears to most of my models. Um, yeah, so I just usually like I'll do a lighter color around the edges just like this or I'll make the entire front face of the ears a bit darker and then, you know, use a different color to just like this. I'll use a darker color and then a lighter color around the edges just to kind of give the idea or the impression suggestion of like extra fluff around the ears and then yep around the rump and the tail they need to be caribou have a little bit lighter fur in this area so i wanted to make sure i did that too i didn't want it to be super blocky though so i went ahead and i just took uh, my paintbrush tool and i used the original brown color that i used for the rest of the body and just kind of traced the outline of that white area just to make it a little bit more fluffy a little bit softer looking and then for the nose, I knew like caribou do have like a little bit darker of a muzzle. They might have some lighter colors around their muzzle too, but again, I didn't want to get too bogged down in texture painting a ton of details. I tried placing the nostrils in a variety of different places. I tried some heart-shaped nostrils, which I love to add um, to my models, but for the caribou, I just didn't feel like it made sense. Like they have, again, they have a really distinctive shape to their muzzle and their actual nostrils, so I wanted to try and represent that as much as I could um, with my somewhat limited drawing abilities. And of course a little tiny little smiley face kind of. And here we have our final caribou model. And there's a fun caribou fact that I forgot to share with y'all during the video. Both male and female caribou can grow antlers. Very cool. Um, I'm not sure if they're the only type of deer that can do that, but it is very unusual and extremely cool. So go caribou. Very cool. Um, another exciting announcement is that I bought this little turntable thing. And now whenever I make paper crafts for Sneep Snarf Club, I can rotate the IRL low poly model on the turntable now. So very exciting to be able to rotate low poly creatures both in the digital and physical world. All of the names you see flying by on the right side of the screen are members of Sneep Snorp Club. Sneep Snorp Club is my membership club, aka Patreon, that I run on my website. And every month, people send me money in exchange. You get exclusive updates about what I'm up to, or monthly paper crafts, monthly vinyl stickers, all kinds of stuff. And this month, January, is the month of the shoe bill, my absolute favorite creature right now. Um, yeah, join Snoop Snorp Club for paper shoe bill and shoe bill stickers. Um, I'm hoping to make a time lapse commentary about modeling shoe bills later this month, so there'll be all kinds of things to see soon. Bye!